Welcome to another video from explainingcomputers.com. This time I'm going to compare the Odroid C4 with the Raspberry Pi 4 4 GB model. These are both quad-core ARM-based SBCs with a similar price tag, so let's go and get started. So, here we have our two contenders, the uh, Odroid C4, which is priced at $50 from Hard Kernel in South Korea and £59.93 from Odroid Co. UK, and the uh, Raspberry Pi 4 for a gigabyte model, which officially sells for $55 or over £54. And uh, yes, the pound is rather weak at the moment in the, the computing marketplace. These prices noted, it's worth mentioning that the Odroid C4 has got no onboard wireless networking, so many people will want to add a, a USB Wi-Fi dongle, something like this, which will cost between about $5 and $10. In terms of processor, the Odroid C4 is based on an Amlogic S905X3 system on a chip with a quad-core A55 CPU clocked at up to 2 GHz, whilst the Pi 4 is based on a Broadcom BCM2711 system on a chip with a quad-core A72 CPU clocked at up to 1.5 GHz. So what this means is that the Odroid has got faster cores and also more modern cores, about two years more modern than the cores on the Pi, but the Pi's A72 cores are sometimes more highly rated. So we really need to do some good performance tests to fully compare these boards, as we'll do a bit later in the video. As we can see, the Odroid also comes with a heatsink and the Pi doesn't. And that given that these boards have got about the same amount of power, you have to say to yourself, one of these manufacturers must be wrong. And in my view, it is the Raspberry Pi Foundation. A single board computer of this type of power really should have some form of cooling solution. So it's good to see a heatsink pre-fitted on the Odroid C4. In terms of other specifications, the Odroid has a Mali G31 650 MHz GPU, while the Pi is a video core 6 clocked at 500 MHz. Both boards on test here also have 4 GB of low power DDR4 RAM. Turning to connectivity, the Odroid has 4 Type A USB 3 ports, whilst the Pi has 2 USB 2 and 2 USB 3. Both boards offer up to 4K output, technically UHD output, with the Odroid having one full-size HDMI port and the Pi being gifted with two micro HDMI sockets. And we could seriously debate which is the better configuration. In terms of drive support, the Odroid can boot from microSD card or an optional EMMC module, while the Pi 4 can boot from microSD card or an attached USB device, including an external USB 3 SSD. As already noted, the Odroid lacks onboard Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, while the Pi has MIPI CSI and DSI ports for connecting a camera and or an LCD display. In terms of other features, the boards both have identical 40-pin GPIO connectors, they've both got gigabit Ethernet, but they've got different means of being powered, with the Pi 4 being powered by a USB-C connector and the Odroid C4 using a barrel jack for power. And once again, we could debate which is the better solution. Greetings. Here I am back again, and I've now got the Odroid C4 up and running here, as well as the Pi 4 chugging away over here. And as you can see, I popped a Pi Maroni fan shim onto the Pi to keep it cool. It's also now two days later, as I've had quite a tricky time setting up for our tests. My initial plan was to run benchmarks in Ubuntu Mate here on the Odroid C4 and in Raspberry Pi OS over on the Pi, as these are the desktop operating systems provided and best supported by the board's respective manufacturers. However, I've struggled to get identical test software running in both Ubuntu Mate and Raspberry Pi OS, and to be honest, I've struggled full stop to get things set up and running exactly as I want them, or indeed at all, in Ubuntu Mate on the Odroid C4. So, in the end, what I've done is to install the 64-bit version of Ubuntu 20.04 with its standard desktop here on the Odroid C4, and then I've also installed the 64-bit ARM version of Ubuntu 20.04 here again on the Raspberry Pi 4. Now, Ubuntu 20.04 with its standard desktop 
is rather heavy to be running on either of these boards, and it's still very much developmental on both the Odroid C4 and the Pi, not least it lacks proper GPU support. But it does at least give us a level playing field for CPU-related tests. Oh, and I should note that Ubuntu is installed on a SanDisk Extreme Pro microSD card on the Pi 4, and on an EMC module on the Odroid C4, which will favour the Odroid for anything drive-related. Anyway, here on the Odroid desktop, I've installed a utility called a Hard Info. I'll run it up over there, and I think I'll also change our scaling settings to 200 to make things nice and clear on the screen. There we are, and uh, here we can see clearly we're on the uh, Odroid uh, C4 from Hard Kernel. If we look under Processor, we can see we've got our uh, four A55 cores running at just under two gigahertz. And if I go down here, we can see at the bottom of a list of things, we've got a various CPU benchmarks, various algorithms we can run to test out the CPU. The first of which is a CPU blowfish. So I'll run that to make sure I keep my mouse still and don't press any keys, or it would be very, very naughty. It would corrupt our results. But uh, there we are, it's finished. And if we just go on down here at the top, we can see there it is, the result is, there we are, 6.55 seconds. The result here is in seconds, lower is better. So what I'll do is just to run through each of these tests. There we are, there's the last of our five results. And uh, we'll flip these onto a table. There we are. And what we obviously now want to do is to go across to the, the Raspberry Pi 4 and to repeat what we've just done on the Odroid C4. And uh, as you can see, we're definitely now on the Raspberry Pi 4 Model B revision at 1.1. Again, if we look down to the processor, we'll see uh, here we've got the uh, four ARM Cortex A72 cores running at uh, 1.5 gigahertz. And so I'll go and uh, repeat the CPU tests so we can compare them to those from the Odroid C4. And uh, there we are, it's finished. So let's uh, transfer all those results across to our table, where uh, as we can see on the Blowfish test, where lower is better, the C4 has beaten the Pi 4, but on all four of the other CPU benchmarks here, the, uh, the Pi has won. So, uh, so far in terms of CPU benchmarks, the Pi is clearly in the lead. So let's move to another CPU benchmark that I'm more familiar with, to be honest. Let's go back to the Pi desktop here and we'll just go back to a normal settings. And what I'm going to do is to run up the terminal and we're going to uh, test out the CPUs using a sysbench. And I've got a sysbench command here. And one of the things you have to know about sysbench is which version you're running. And uh, here we're running version 1.0.18 which works very differently to the version 0.4.12 you would find, for example, if you were running Raspbian. Because the 0.4.12 version runs a set number of events and you see how long it takes to run, whereas the 1.0.18 version, which we've got here, by default runs for a certain period of time, 10 seconds, and sees how many events you can do in the time. But uh, here I've set it up so that we're actually going to run it like the original version of Sysbench. So it'll run a certain number of events or to an event maximum of, of 10,000. Time zero basically means ignore time, don't use the time setting. And what we're doing is to run for four cores on our uh, boards. We're going to factor prime numbers up to a value of 20,000 as we've done before. Anyway, that's just to try and explain what I'm doing here with Sysbench. Let's just uh, run the test, see what the Pi results in, the Pi 4. It's having a little think there. Shouldn't take too long, I think, just to run this through. There we are. And it's come up with, uh, what have we got? A total time of 4.7718 seconds. I think 4.77 will do for us there. And events per second is 2094.01. So let's go across to the uh, Odroid C4 and uh, set up the same test. And here we are, ready to go. So let's... Uh, Execute Sysbench. See what the Odroid can do on the, uh, the same test. Oh, and uh, there we are. The Odroid completed it in uh, 6.6330 seconds with uh, events per second at uh, 15.07. So let's flip that onto our table as well. There we are. Once again, the, uh, the Pi 4 wins. So in the CPU test I've managed to run here, the uh, Odroid C4 is very much second to the Raspberry Pi 4. Right, here we are back again on the uh, 
Odroid C4, and I thought we'd uh, run up GIMP so we can do a test comparing the speed of applying a GIMP filter here in a GIMP 210, as you can see. So there we are, GIMP has come up, and we'll do File, and we'll do a new document, which will be 19, 20, 10, 80 with a white background. That's the default. That can come up there. And we'll go to uh, Filters and a Render. And I think we'll do a Lava. That's quite an intense filter to apply. And uh, before we press the OK button, I'll bring up exactly the same thing on the uh, Raspberry Pi 4, 4 gigabyte model. And then we'll uh, hit the OK buttons at exactly the same moment. And uh, there they go. And it'll take a second to apply this. Various different filters get applied, solid noise, cubism, all kinds of things, oilify, very, very exciting. And we'll see how this is going to come out. Uh, getting there, hopefully fairly soon they will uh, complete. And there we are, the Raspberry Pi 4 4 gigabyte model has finished in 20.4 seconds, with the Odroid C4 coming in at a 24 0.1 seconds. So once again, the Odroid C4 is not as fast as the Raspberry Pi 4. And just as an aside, I thought you might be interested in seeing exactly the same test run in the 32-bit version of the Raspberry Pi OS, because of course we're running in 64-bit here in a Ubuntu 20.04. So if we transition over to Raspberry Pi OS, where I've got exactly the same test set up, and there we are, and if we start it off, You'll probably see straight away this is going significantly slower. It will get there, but it'll take more time than we saw on the uh, Odroid C4 or the Raspberry Pi 4 running the 64-bit uh, Linux distro. The oil painting here is taking some considerable time, isn't it? It's almost as slow as painting by hand using uh, the 32-bit uh, operating system here rather than the 64. Who says I'm waffling just to try and fill some time in as this uh, computer completes its task. I am, but I want to show you in real time what is going on here. The big difference it makes to be using a 64-bit operating system rather than a 32-bit operating system. And uh, oh, there we are, it's almost got to the end of oil painting. And it will continue with Edge, Gaussian Blur, and with Gradient Map to complete in 48.7 seconds and very much proving how significant it is when you can run a 64-bit rather than 32-bit operating system on your computer. And because of this, I will fairly soon be doing a video all about the available 64-bit operating systems for the Raspberry Pi 4. Right, I thought we should do some tests of drive and interface performance, and we'll start with the Odroid C4, where we can test the speed of the microSD card, the eMMC module from which the board is currently booting, and also we'll test the speed of USB, because I've connected this external SSD. So if I bring up a, a terminal, we'll start out doing an LSBRK, this block devices, to see what's connected to the system, which is what I've just told you about. Hopefully, yes, we've got the external SSD there, SDA1, We've got the uh, EMMC module on the, those uh, mounted partitions there, and we've got a Lexara microSD card plugged in there. So I've installed HD parameters, HD Palm. So let's bring up the test for initially the microSD card, which is uh, that up there. Hopefully I've got that sitting in the buffer somewhere. There we are, and we'll run that. It'll give us an error because it can't communicate properly with uh, an EMMC module, this utility, but that won't affect the test. And uh, there we are, we've got a speed of uh, 133 roughly megabytes a second. So let's do that again for the micro SD card, which is hopefully sitting somewhere in my uh, tests there. So we can run that and see what that does. It's going to be slower than EMMC, of course. Let's see what we get. Oh, 79 megabytes a second. So not as fast as the EMMC, but still not too bad. And finally, we'll do a SDA1, the external USB SSD, which is, of course, a speed test, not of the SSD, but of the uh, USB 3 interface it's connected to. So we'll do uh, that. We get a very strange error there, but I think, again, it's just about communication with the drive, so I'm just going to ignore that. And uh, it's given us a speed there of, what, 290 megabytes a second, which looks uh, fairly reasonable. Nowhere near the speed of that SSD, but uh, not a bad speed to achieve over USB on a single board. Computer. So let's head on over to the Raspberry Pi 4, where I've again connected up the external SanDisk SSD, and we'll bring up the terminal. 
and uh, we'll do an LSPLK again. Look at the block devices. There they are. Just two this time because of course we haven't got the MMC slot on the Raspberry Pi 4, so we can't have the MMC module being tested, but we can test the uh, micro SD card from which the Pi is currently running, which is uh, that. Let's do, uh, there we are, that same one. And uh, it's going to give us a result in a second, 40.2 megabytes a second, which is uh, pretty much as expected. We know the Raspberry Pi 4 has got a slower SD card reader than many other single board computers, about half the speed of the one apparently on the uh, Odroid C4. And uh, let's test USB as well. Let's test out uh, SDA1 there, the external SSD, which uh, somewhat reassuringly gives us exactly the same error we got on the uh, Odroid C4. And uh, there we are, look, at 317.9 megabytes a second. So that's a little bit better than what we got on the uh, Odroid C4. And uh, let's just put everything onto a table because we're going table mad in this video. There we are. We can see we've got some good news here for the Odroid C4. It's got a nice faster EMMC module we don't have on the Pi, and it's got a faster micro SD card slot. Right. This video seems to be headed in one direction, but before I bring it to a conclusion, I thought we should try some YouTube playback on each of the boards, because people are always interested in the playback of a streaming media. And for this, I've come back into Ubuntu Mate on the Odroid C4, because it gives us the best browser-based uh, streaming media playback of any uh, desktop operating system I managed to try out on the, the Odroid C4. So uh, let's go to the, the media there and uh, play it. This is my standard test clip and we'll full screen it. And I've been messing around quite a bit to try and get this as good as I possibly can. I've got a 8264 if I installed and running. And uh, this actually is pretty good, isn't it? We're getting some drop frames. It's not perfect. About what? Just over 10% drop frames there, I think we'll get it. Maybe a little bit more than that. But um, this is perfectly reasonable. We've got fairly good YouTube playback in 1920-1080 here on the, the Odroid C4 in the, in the Firefox browser. And um, this is better than I had when I first tested the Odroid C4. It's a little bit later. Software's maybe moved on a little bit. I've messed around a lot in the settings to get things working, but this is not too bad. So let's go across to uh, the Raspberry Pi 4, where here I'm running a Raspberry Pi OS where I can get the best browser-based uh, streaming media playback. So we'll go to the browser and play our media. And again, we'll uh, full screen it and see how well uh, the Pi performs. Having a little hiccup there, getting there, it'll get there in the end. And um, again, this isn't too bad, but we have got dropped frames. Clearly we've got dropped frames at the top there and it was even struggling to get the right resolution there for a second, wasn't it? There we are, but it's clearly running now 1920, 1080, with a, I think a slightly smaller percentage, yes, a definitely a smaller percentage of drop frames than we saw on the uh, Odroid C4, although in practical terms, uh, the actual uh, vision of this here is pretty much the same. So I'm gonna call it pretty even in terms of YouTube playback across these two boards. It depends so much on the software and the GPU support. We've got some distance left to go, I think, until we get perfect YouTube playback in a browser on an ARM-based single board computer. The Odroid C4 is one of the first competitors to the Raspberry Pi 4 to offer a similar specification at the same price point. The C4 also has some advantages over the Pi 4, including its pre-fitted heatsink, the full-size HDMI connector, and the socket for adding an EMMC flash module. This said, as we've seen from the tests in this video, there doesn't seem to be a performance benefit in choosing a C4 over a Pi 4, at least if you're running a 64-bit operating system on the Raspberry Pi. And in that context, I'm very pleased I ended up using the 64-bit edition of a Ubuntu 20.04 on both boards when doing their CPU tests. But now that's it for another video. If you've enjoyed what you've seen here, press that like button. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. And I hope to talk to you again very soon.